Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Beautiful New Year. May God bless you in this New Year to go forward with Him. And that's what I'd like to talk with you about today is going forward into this New Year, walking with the Lord. What is that like? What is God looking for with us and from us in this next year, especially with respect to time? Namely, how does God want us as his people to view time as we go forward into this next year with it? Should we train our attention on the past, on the present, or on the future? Let's see what our good Lord who walks with us would say to us about that today in his holy word, the scriptures. First of all, let's just focus on that super theme of the scriptures, walking with the Lord. That is a super theme in the Bible. If we open up to Genesis chapter 5, check this verse out. This is Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam. We read, Enoch walked with God. After the birth of Methuselah, 300 years, and had other sons and daughters, thus all the days of Enoch were 365 years, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. <laughs> Do you know what that means? He never died. Who is the other person that never died? Elijah. Right, Elijah. So you have Enoch and Elijah. Enoch was one of the two people ever to have lived, never to have died. And what great thing did he do that God was so amazed and impressed with that he took him right up to heaven? All we read of him is he walked with God. That's it. That is the best possible thing we could do. And in fact, if you look over here, just turn the page a little bit. Let me turn over back to Genesis 5 here. Look across the page, and here's another one. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. What did this guy do in his life? What did he do? You have no idea what he did, except one thing, and one only. He walked with God. And that's all you really need to know. That's what God is after with you, and after with me, to simply walk with me, he says. Walk with me through life. As you journey through this world to my kingdom to come, walk with me by faith. And we don't only walk with God. Listen to this verse in Leviticus 26. Verse 12, God says, And I will walk among you and will be your God, and you shall be my people. So we walk with him, but he also walks with us. And if you look over at Micah chapter 6, verse 8, we read that's really God's, what God is after with us. He has showed you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. That's all God is really after with us, is that we would walk by faith with Him through this world. And if you think about it, think about this. The reason Jesus came, well, let's read it. John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the very reason Jesus Christ came was that we would be able to walk with God in harmony, through the reconciliation he won through his cross and resurrection, that we might become friends of God through the forgiveness of our sins, we can just walk the rest of our life with God, every day by faith. Isn't that a beautiful thing? That's the purpose for which he came. Many people, I know this is a simple sounding message, but you know what? Most of the world does not do this. If you look at the Bible, in the Old Testament days, Jeremiah 6, God's calling his people. Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads, look, ask for the ancient paths where the good way is, and walk in it, and find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. They refused, they rejected. We're not walking there, we ain't going there. 
In fact, later on we read, they walked according to the stubbornness of their own evil heart. That's the case with so many people in the world today. Amen? Amen. They're walking in darkness. They don't know over what they stumble. And you know the problem with not walking with God? You know what the problem with that is? This is a very deep theological concept. Try to follow this. It's stupid. <laughs> and evil. Because it brings trouble now and destruction later on. For the Bible says that the way is easy and the gate is wide that leads to destruction and those who enter it by it are many. That's darkness. But to walk with God, it says the gate is narrow, the way is hard, but it is the way of life. And that's what Christ has come to bring us. Life now and also life forever in the kingdom to which we are headed, where he's walking with us too. So, do you walk with God? Do you walk with Him by faith? Are you walking with the Lord? Jesus, how do we do that? Well, Jesus says, I am the way. In other words, I'm the road. If you want to walk with God, it's me. You walk with me. I am the road, the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He's the way. And how has Jesus brought us into a walk with God. What does it mean really to walk with God? It means that you are in harmony with Him. That you are keeping His word and His commands, what pleases Him. It means that you are reconciled to God. You have friendship through what He did for you to save you at the cross and the resurrection. By faith in Him, you are justified. It means that you're close, that you have proximity, that you are friends, that you are walking with Him and He is walking with you through this life. And really, that's all God's after with us, is that we just walk with Him day by day in Christ by faith. But let's take a look more specifically, though, for this next year, as you go into the year with the Lord, how does He want us to look at time? Should we live at the past? Should we train our attention on the past, the present, or the future? Take the past to start out. Should we, should we do that? Should we walk and go into this rest of our lives as we journey with God to the world to come? Should we go into that looking backwards to the past? Should we look back? No way. God says, don't do that. That's not the way to walk with me. People do it, though. We all do it. I know this sounds like a simple message, but we all can fall into this. What are some ways we look back to the past and live in the past? Well, number one way is you can look back wistfully. You ever do this? Oh, the good old days. Oh, when things were better than they are now. God is my glory. Oh, my best days are behind me. Before me is only darkness. I'm getting old. <laughs> you ever feel like that? You know what God says? Ecclesiastes 7, Don't say, why were the former days better than these? For it's not from wisdom that you ask this. And I'll cover that more in a moment. <laughs> Second thing, people look back to the past and live in the past that are bound by the past because they look back regretfully. And they say, oh, my past failures, my mistakes, my sins. Oh, my sins, I've done such horrible things, my wrongs. And they drag those things into the present like a great ball and chain. And their weight is so heavy, it's like they're dragging a boulder. It's a weight heavy to bear. Oh, my past. Oh, you do that? Think on your, to your former sins of your past, haunt your present, and destroy the freedom that you have in Jesus Christ so that you don't enjoy your walk with God? God says, that's not the way to walk with me. And, in fact, Jesus says, remember Lot's wife. What happened with her? She looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. He also says, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom. The way of the Christian is not backwards, but your life is before you and now. Don't go backwards. But is there a time that Christians can look back to the past as we go forward with Christ? Yeah, there's some good ways to do that. Let me give you... A reason to do that. When you're in trouble, when you are 
and adversity, and you're facing a threat, and you feel very small and like you can't handle it, you can look back to the past to draw strength into your present. Who's done this in the scriptures? Well, I'd look at David. Remember him? Oh my goodness, I'm facing a giant. The guy was as high as that grate on that, on that air vent right there. Nine feet tall. But David drew strength from his past. He says, ha, ah, I've faced lions before in my past. I beat them. Bears have come and attacked me. I beat the blank out of them. This giant shall be like one of them. Seeing he's defied the armies of the living God. And so he draws strength from his past victories and his present and says, this one shall be like one of them. Could you do that? Paul does the same thing in the New Testament. He says, 2 Corinthians 1, he says, we were so utterly unbearably crushed. We despaired of life itself. He says, uh, but God delivered us from so deadly a peril and he's going to deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. In other words, we've already beaten a thousand of these before by God. We can beat this one too. Do you think you can do that? Do you need to draw some strength? Do you feel small and threatened right now or facing some giant in your life? Well, say, hey, I've taken care of bears before. I've taken care of lions. I've beaten other troubles by the Lord. This one shall be like one of them. It's a great way to do it. Draw strength from your past into your present. One of my favorite movies, as you all know, Meet Me on the Bounty. Captain Bly. Fletcher Christian sets Captain Bly and his men adrift on the uh, open boat voyage 2,500 nautical miles from the nearest port of call with scant rations of food and little navigational equipment. And after nearly 40 days in the open boat, one of the crewmen says to the captain, Oh, it's too far, sir. We'll never make it. We'll never make it. We're done for. And the captain, with courage, plucks up the heart of his crew and he says, don't let your mind dwell on that, lad. Think of how far you've come. You think you could say that? Oh, I don't know if I can make it any further, Lord. He says to you, don't let your mind dwell on that. Think of how far you've come with me. Draw strength from your past into your present and go forward confidently. That's what God wants for us. Looking back, you can also look back for joy and thanksgivings. Oh, God, you did great things. I thank you for that. But any other reason, any other looking back, God says, don't go there, don't do it. Because the Christian life, let's, give me, let me give you some reasons. Number one, your life is not in the past. That's water under the bridge. Your life is now, and your life is in the future. Secondly, God says your past is not brighter than your present or your future. You might be like, oh no, it is, because... It was so good back then, and now I'm going to... No, no. Listen, guess, guess what? If God is with you in the present, it's brighter. Because He's not living in your past. He was with you in the past. He's not there anymore. He's with you in the present. Your past is darker than your present because the Lord is with you now. He's not back there. He's where you are now. It's brighter than it was before. It's not from wisdom that you look backwards. Don't do it, God says. It's going to get brighter, too. Thirdly... Um, <clears throat> You can look back and say your past sins, your past failures, your past wrongs. God says they're not worth dragging into your present life. You know why? Because behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. You've been redeemed. You've been set free. Christ has come to all of those wrongdoings that we've done to take them away and to cut the chain, break it, so that those things don't weigh you down anymore. The trouble with a lot of Christians, what is it? Oh no, I'm going to go back and drag those former troubles into my present life, and all of a sudden I'm heavy burden to bear, and I'm pulling this terrible boulder with me wherever I go. God says, don't do that. That's not why I set you free. I set you free from sadness to turn it into joy. That you can say, not... I must, I have terrible sins, but that I have been forgiven great sins. I'm free. Thank you, God, to turn your sorrows into joy. That's what God wants for you. If you think about your former sins anyway, they're water under the bridge, God says. You can't get them back. You don't want them back, do you? He says in Micah, I have 
Com I've had compassion on you. I've cast all your sins into the depths of the sea. In other words, into forgetfulness. God's not remembering them against you anymore. They don't come into his mind anymore. Why are they coming into your eye, into your mind, into your eyes? Don't go back to the past. And if you're still wrestling with haunted by sins of your past, listen to this word from the Lord. I'll just speak it this way. Let it go. Let it go. It's down under the bridge. It's water gone. I've forgiven it. Let it go. If you do that, friends, you're going to be free. You're going to be so free. You're going to be jumping out of here, running down the street today with joy. Because you're free. That's what Christ came to give you. And that's what Paul says in his letter. One thing I do, brethren, I forget what lies behind. And I strain forward to what lies ahead for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So don't live backwards. Your life ain't back there. It's right here. And we're heading to it in the future, God says. So next one is, how about the future? Should we live and go through 2020 going with the Lord and walking with Him, fearing the future? Should we dread it? Shake before it? Go, oh no. What might happen to me this year? Terrible things might happen to me. They might overcome me. An enemy might come. I might, I might get hurt. I might get killed. Maybe there are things in this future year that I won't be able to handle. Oh no. Is that the way we should be living as Christians? God says, that's not the way to walk with me. Have you forgotten who's with you? Walking through this next year? God says, remember who it is who's with you. His name is the Lord of hosts. Think about this. Isaiah 51, God says to his people, I, I am he that comforts you. Who are you that you are afraid of a man who dies? Of the son of man who's made like grass? And have you forgotten your maker, the Lord, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth? And you fear continually all the day because of the fury of the oppressor when he sets himself to destroy? Where's the fury of the oppressor? He who is bowed down shall speedily be released. He shall not die and go down to the pit, neither shall his bread fail. For I am the Lord your God, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Who's going with you, friends, through this next year? You got to be afraid of the future? God says, I speak, and the sea roars. The Lord of hosts is my name. If I go into the future with you, what have you to fear? I'm taking care of it for you, right? What's Jesus say about the future? If you look at that verse in Matthew 6, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you, sh what you shall eat. What you shall drink. What's that? What tense? Future. Don't worry about the future. Let it go again. Don't worry about the future, God says. Because look at the birds. God's taking care of them. They're not running around like crazy people like you are. And yet God feeds them. If God takes care of blue jays and seagulls, you think he's going to forget his people? Come on. Don't be afraid of that stuff, God says. Go forward confident with, confidently with me. If I clothe the grass of the field with rainbows better than any king, and, and I take care of daisies and marigolds and daffodils, you think I'm going to forget my own children? Come on, come to your right man, mind my people. Don't be afraid of the future. You might not know what it holds, but you know him who holds your future. The Lord of hosts, the sea obeys his commands. You're in good stead. God says, and I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll make straight your paths. Do you believe that? If you are with the Lord and the Lord is with you, what have you to fear as you journey to heaven through this world? You know, we have a not-so-easy life a lot of times. Sometimes it's easy. But we got mountains and we got valleys. We've got rainstorms and we've got sunshine. We've got uh, forests. We've got deserts. We've got gentle streams and we've got raging oceans to cross on our way. But the Lord of hosts is with you. None of this is a big problem. Forget when you say, I have little faith. For 
When David slew the giant, Elijah bested the 400 prophets of Baal that were arrayed against him. And will not the Lord give you the victory this year, O ye of little faith? How about this one? How about this year, instead of your name being, I am little faith, how about, my name is great faith. I think if you go into the world in the year like that, my new name is great faith. God says, that's the one I want for you. Go into it without fear. Be brave. Be courageous. Because remember who's with you. I'm with you. The Lord of hosts. And I'm going to provide for you and give you the victory. So if you get great things happen to you this year, or maybe terrible difficulties and troubles, maybe that assails you. But we can say in any and all circumstances, it doesn't matter. Because I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and want. I can do all things in Him who strengthens me. Go forward with that attitude, friends. That's what it is to walk with the Lord. And next, how about if we're not going to look to the past that way, and we're not going to fear the future, how about what should we do? Go through, come on, you can anticipate this. Go and live in the present with the Lord. Is that in the Bible? To walk with God in the present moment? It is. Matthew 6, verse 37. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, Jesus says. That's the future, don't worry about it. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Let the day's own trouble be sufficient for the day. In other words, let's just handle today. Let's go through today together. Let's focus on this day's troubles together. We'll walk through as father and son. Just focus on this present moment. You know why that's a good idea, Neil? God ain't living in the past. That's already done. It's not there anymore. He holds the future. we got a great future, but he's not there either. That's imaginary. It's not yet come. This is reality right now. And he says, I want you to enjoy me right now as we go through this life together. If you think of uh, Tuesday night, New Year's Eve, we, I shared a story about the, uh, the pilgrims or an illustration. Remember the pilgrims, Mayflower, 1620, early colonialists? They left England. That's the old world. And then they had to travel across the great Atlantic Ocean. Let's call that the Sea of Time. From the old world to the new world, America. The land of the free, the home of the brave, the place of liberty and plenty. But before they got to the future, they left behind their past and they had to travel across the Sea of Time. If you're a pilgrim and you're going to do that, should you be looking back to England, Jenny? And say, no, I want to go back to the old world. Oh, no, don't worry about that. Let it go. Should you be looking forward to the future? Absolutely. Great future. But where are you going to set your mind? On that present day, where you are with the Lord crossing that great sea. It's an adventure God wants to enjoy with you. This life, with its ups and downs, is a great time for father and children to be together, to enjoy each other. That's where he wants you to enjoy. I've sailed in tall ships, as you know, for years. You've got to keep your mind on the present moment. If you're at night, picture, this is a real story. I was at sea, and, and it's very dark, and the wind is blowing, and we have to take the fore topsail, about 60 feet up in the rig, it's flapping around violently, and I have to climb up there with another guy up the rig and stand on two-by-twos, which are the cross trees up there, and this sail's flapping around violently, and we have to take it in. Should I be thinking about yesterday at that moment? <laughs> if I do, I'm coming down. Should I be thinking about future problems that I got at that moment? No. you got to live in the present moment if you're going to live. And you do it, and that's the beauty of it. You live in the moment. And you enjoy the moment of the beauty of a sunset or a sunrise with the sea sparkling like diamonds. God wants you this year in 2020 to enjoy each present day with Him. Your future, you got a great future, but enjoy today, is what he says. Go with me through each day, and you can do that right now, today, this day, January 5th. So, forget the past, let it go. you got a great future, but don't fear it. Live in the present moment, but as I said a moment ago, be very excited about your future. Because when the pilgrims are crossing, they got the Lord of hosts with if you want to say it that way. And God's, you've got the Lord with you. We are His workmanship. 
says Ephesians, says Paul, we're created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Does God know what's holding what he's got for you, Judy, in 2020? He does. He says, I've already set up what you're going to be walking into. It's going to be so great. I've already prepared it ahead of time. Works to walk in. Just walk with me and I'll lead you into it. That's what this next New Year's about. And Paul says, Christ always leads us in triumph, and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. And Proverbs 4 says, the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. You are like the sun coming up over the sea until it gets into full strength, and that's coming. That's where God's leading you, to the place, America. <laughs> The land of the free, the home of the brave, the land of plenty and liberty and joy and freedom in the new world. Just like the pilgrims. Far greater than your wildest imaginings. For God says and promises in the Bible, when we drop anchor in that province town harbor, they shall hunger no more. They shall not thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb, that's Jesus, in the midst of the throne, he'll be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of living water. Are you looking forward to that? The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And henceforth there is laid up for us a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to us on that day. And not only to us, but to all who have loved his appearing. We wait, says Peter, According to his promise for a new heavens, a new earth in which righteousness dwells. So, as to time and going through the day with the Lord, the years, your future is getting, the path is forever brighter. It's upward. It's forward to glory as we walk with him. Your life is not behind you, but now and before you. So don't look back and don't fear your future for it's secured in the promise of God in Christ. Just enjoy each present day and moment with the Lord. That's the only place to enjoy the adventure with Him as we cross the sea. And one day soon we will get to our destination, His kingdom, and the world to come. And there God has promised you joy, freedom, life, and light forevermore. In Jesus' name.